Imagine for a moment, you're in an A320, nighttime departure, you're the pilot monitoring, and right as you're rotating off the runway, the airspeed goes blank, right in front of you on the PFD. Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. This imaginary scenario that I'm describing, for me, was not imaginary at all, as this actually happened, and I'm going to walk you through exactly what happened and how we handled it. So we're rotating off the runway, and in the landing light, I see a quick reflection of what was a bird, and it was an immediate quick instantaneous little pop like this and my airspeed indicator went to nothing now i was a pilot monitoring and in that moment what did i do nothing just my normal calls positive rate gear up contact departure contact departure but i'm seeing that okay my my airspeed indication is gone now the pilot flying doesn't even realize it at this point because of course his instruments are working and i'm looking over at his and i see his airspeed i'm comparing it with the standby and they're both reading accurately from what I can tell, looking at the ground speed, I'm looking at everything, and I, and I knew right away this was just a bird that uh, got basically ingested into the pitot tube, and that's basically what we're looking at. Now, interestingly, no ECAM popped up, and that's what I'm going to get into in this video is the ECAM, the QRH, OEB, status, stop ECAM, then do we got to go to the FCOM, like all these procedures and protocols that can be, frankly, uh, in a 320, especially for those transitioning from a Boeing or really any other non-Airbus product, can be a bit confusing. We're going to look at that here in just a second. So we got no indication. Now, once we were uh, safely flying, I, I made a reference to what had happened. I said, hey, we, I lost my airspeed indication. And there was no ECAM, as I said. And it was kind of like a, oh, wow, okay, yeah, you did. And we, we kept pressing on. I'm waiting for an ECAM to pop up any second, but it didn't. Now, I knew right away just based on system knowledge that the airspeed indicator is air data. It comes from the ADR, right? And we have three of them. And we also have a switching panel. So if I put the switching panel on uh, number three, FO on three, okay, then immediately I'm gonna begin uh, receiving airspeed information from ADR number three. Now I, I know that just based on system knowledge, but keep in mind, at this point, there's no procedure or protocol, no ECAM action, nothing's really popped up yet. Now, eventually, finally, as we were climbing a, a, a little bit later on, and by later, I mean maybe a couple thousand feet later, an ECAM popped up, and it was a level two ECAM accompanied by a single chime. Bing, ECAM says nav ADR2 fault, ADR push button switch off. And that's really all it said to do. Cross-reference the uh, uh, barrel altimeters, turn off the ADR, and that was essentially the only thing. Now, ECAM action is complete. I proceed to the QRH, and what you find in the QRH I'm going to share with you is, uh, well, nothing. That's what you find. There is uh, really nothing. Now, this is not the QRH I use at, at the, uh, in the jet that I was flying. This is one we use here in training, but it basically says here under NAV, you can see that they have an ADR 1 plus 2 plus 3 fault, but they don't have a, just a NAV ADR 2 fault. And so effectively now what this means is, the QRH has nothing. The ECAM said nothing about the switching panel, and the QRH didn't direct us to do anything either because there was no procedure for that. So now we go to the EFCOM. Now, just that before I hit touch on that, I just want to quickly remind you of something. In order, in a 320, or in really an Airbus, any Airbus product, we always go in this sequence. A application, when we have an ab abnormal, right, application of OEB memory items, followed by ECAM actions. At the status page, we stop, consider any checklist relights or resets that we may have. And then once the those are complete, we can continue ECAM. Once the ECAM action is complete, then we reference the QRH. And if the QRH has nothing and or it is considered complete and we have additional time, then we go to the FCOM for more supplementary information. It's a lot of stuff, to be quite honest with you. And when you compare it to Boeing, where if I have a problem, I just go to the QRH, it can be quite confusing, which is why, by the way, if you go to OneStepPrep.com, we have an A320 online ground school that really talks in detail about how to handle non-normal situations and go through all those protocols. By the way, if you come here and train in person with us and do a type rating, because we are an FAA-approved 142 school that does issue type ratings and ATP licenses, we go through all that in detail. I'll hit more on that later. Let's get back to this. The FCOM. I dig my way into the FCOM. Time permitting, right, is what it is. It, go to the FCOM time permitting. Well, there's time permitting. So let's go to the FCOM. And I do. And finally, in the FCOM, there was there uh, the procedure that commanded to switch the ADR switching panel 
to number three on the FO side. And lo and behold, of course, in doing that, I have an airspeed indication now and all things are back to normal. And really, that's the, the end of that scenario, so to speak, right? But the point I'm ultimately getting to is a couple of things. I knew well beforehand that doing that was going to actually give me an airspeed indication back. And your ability to effectively troubleshoot things, uh, even without even referencing necessarily these materials immediately, but just to have an idea already of what's going on is directly related to uh, your system knowledge and really your training. I think there's kind of this misnomer that um, we're going to rise to the occasion, but really what I find is we actually fall to the level of preparation. You don't really rise to an occasion, you fall to your level of preparation. And your preparation is important and your training is important. And this is why I'm a big advocate of telling people with all my heart and, and soul, and I genuinely believe this, do not shop training the way you shop uh, toilet paper, okay? It, it, like, does it really matter if you get brand A or B? It does in the world of type ratings. It does in the world of training because I can tell you if you go to one school over another school that does not take a lot of pride in what they deliver and, and actually delivering a great training product with instructors that are there because they want to be there and take pride in delivering a great training product, that could mean the difference between uh, whether you have an understanding at that level that makes you not just competent but confident. And so One Step Prep Academy, I can tell you all of our instructors here very much uh, are at the level of um, doing things out of a, a genuine desire to want you to do very well and be very safe and be very not just competent but confident and proficient. So with that being said, the 320, when we have non-normals, I got a couple other videos on this. It can be quite lengthy, but the main thing I want to share with you is take pride in your craft to dig in deeper. If you're watching this video right now, it's because you do, because you're interested, you're, you want to continue learning. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here watching this right now, and I applaud you for that. But remember, to recap that, when we have a problem, OEBs, memory items, into the ECAM at the status, checklist relay reset, followed by later on the QRH and the FCOM. That's like six things. That's quite a few things, all right? Hope to see you here if you come in person to Miami, or we could always do it online virtually. All right, Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. I'll see you in another video.